Hi, my name is Corey, and I want to introduce you to a brand new artist, Seth Schleter. Woo! That's me. Did I get the name right? You did it. Yes. High five. Let's go. It's hard. It's it is a it's a it's a mouthful. <laughs> you are such a young buck. Uh, you said your age earlier this morning, and uh, I have a daughter that's slightly older than you. That's crazy. So I'm sorry that you're sitting with an elder, <laughs> but I'm also blessing you I love that it. you're sitting with a I wise. Yoda. Exactly. You got to learn from the mentors. You got everyone needs their Gandalf and their Yoda, you know? Oh, very nice. Yeah. Uh, home base, where's that at? Uh, Columbus, Ohio. Born and raised? No, Erie, Pennsylvania was where I was born and raised for 13 years. Then moved to Toledo, Ohio for five years, and then been in Columbus area since. Do you feel like Ohio is a good fit for Seth? You know, it's a great question. I overall enjoy Ohio. I know it's like, I feel like Ohio is like the butt of so many like internet memes and jokes. <laughs> Everyone's like, Ohio. But it's actually, especially Columbus. Columbus area is like really nice. Toledo, I, would, I wouldn't, go, wouldn't go back. But Columbus is pretty nice. And we'll see how long I'm there. It's like, I could see myself there for like a chunk of time, but I also don't think it's like the end game. Yeah. You know? Uh, Ohio State plays such a big role in the state of Ohio. They do you do. feel that where you're at? <laughs> so Ohio State is, I joke, well, actually, no joke, I believe it. Ohio State's like a religion <laughs> yeah. in Columbus area. And so I've always liked the Buckeyes. I've, like, enjoyed Ohio State. But I'm also the kind of personality that really likes to stir the pot a little bit, and especially because so many of my friends are huge Ohio State fans. I will, this is horrible to me, I will cheer for Ohio State every day of the year, except the day they play their biggest rival, Michigan. And on that day, they, I will cheer for Michigan, and everyone will be like, what are you doing? Like, how dare you cheer for Michigan? And I'm just like, let's go, stir the pot. So I like the Buckeyes. I, I like seeing them win, but I also like um, when the Ohio State fans get a little bit tilted from, uh, from just the craziness. Are you an antagonist? Yes, a little bit, a yeah? little bit. I, I generally like to make people happy, I would say, but if it's like a close friend or if I just see something that I think is stupid, I'm like, I'll, I'll push that button a little bit. Okay. So. Uh, six siblings, did I hear? I'm one of six, yes. One of yes. six. Where do you fit in the Brady Bunch? So, that's good. And one of three boys and three girls, too, which is really funny. Um, I'm the second oldest, so I have an older sister, and then there's me. And so then, you're Peter. Yes. You know, I've actually Bunch. never seen an episode of The Brady Bunch. Let's um, pause for a moment. <laughs> I could go watch one. You've never seen an episode of Brady but Bunch. But what's interesting is I watched Andy Griffith g growing up a ton, and they had, like, always the, the commercial for The Brady Bunch at the beginning of it. Sure. Which is really funny. So I, like, would see, you know, the television screens or whatever with, like, all the faces. So... I kind of know a little bit about it. The but. Brady Bunch kids would get together and sing for, uh, they needed to raise money for mom's gift. Okay. Did the Schleter kids ever get together and sing for um, a contest or a family dynamic? You know, um, not really. So, like, I remember two times. One, we there was like a homeschool talent show. I was homeschooled. Um, homeschool talent show. And we, I don't know why we did this, but we all got together and we sang... Um, the song One Day by Mattis Yahoo, if you know that song. I <laughs> like, know Mattis oh, Yahoo, okay. yeah, yeah. It was like this song, and we were all there, and it was like at this talent show, but the mic wasn't working, and the piano volume like was down all the way. So it was just like the most awkward thing ever. And then one time, my sister decided to um, try to gather all the siblings together to sing a Mother's Day song for my mother. Aww. And I bailed out, <laughs> which is hilarious because I'm the musician now. I bailed, and it ended up only being, I think, three of them. And it was a song that my sister wrote, and it was basically just, um, Happy Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Like, that was, like, the song. Yeah. And we have a video of it, and she's the only one singing it. My brother's just kind of there, like, ah, ah, and then my other sister's just, like, standing there and smiling. So it's, like, the most awkward video ever, and we still joke about it. But no, like, no uh, fundraising events for us. That song will not be a part of your set list anytime soon. You know, I was thinking about opening with it, but we'll kind of read the crowd and see, <laughs> see if it would work. <laughs> So, homeschooled yes. all the way through what would be considered high school yeah. stuff. Yes. What's yep. your big, other than education, what's your big takeaway from being uh, homeschooled? So, it was actually really funny because I did not, I initially wanted to be homeschooled. So, I went to like um, a brick and mortar school, preschool, kindergarten, 
and then in first grade, and then I was homeschooled. And I was really excited to be homeschooled because um, I really loved the opportunity to learn at my own pace and to like, get ahead in things that I was excited about and et cetera. So okay. I loved it in grade school. And by the time eighth grade hit, though, I like wanted for, like more friends and I wanted to hang out with girls and I want you know all those different things that like as you approach high school you want to do so yeah. I really wanted to be in like a real school but my parents were like nope you're gonna be homeschooled and I was like the worst I was such a brat like looking back I just made my parents lives miserable for so long about it and it was probably about sophomore year which was also like when I really like dove into my relationship with Jesus that I was like okay I need to be more like you know, accepting that this is where I'm at, I'm gonna make the most of it. And when that like mentality, when that switch kind of flipped in my head, it was actually really awesome because I saw all the benefits that could come from like what homeschooling can bring. So sure. in homeschooling, you know, you can finish a typical school day's work in three, four hours, just because you're working at your own pace. You don't have to like wait for everyone else. And it was like technically a long distance learning program. So we still had like online classes that we went to and we had to submit work into actual teachers and stuff, but you still finish really early. And for me then it was awesome because I had time to do things I love to do, which music was one of them. So it's funny even like looking back, cause I'm like, if I wasn't homeschooled, I don't know if I would have like, had the time or passion to really like invest in just like playing music and learning to play guitar and learning to sing and doing ministry things and all these different things. So I think homeschooling for me was a, a great opportunity to dive into like the things I was passionate about and discover that from like a younger age. Where does music come from? Did you see it from mom and dad or both? Definitely dad. dad. So dad grew up, like he would lead worship for our family, which is just really, really cool. Like wow. looking back. But it's funny, like my youngest brother, like he'll still, my dad will pick up a guitar and like he'll pray, like we'll, we'll do like family prayer together and he'll, he'll lead. And my youngest brother gets, he's like, dad, you're such an 80s worship leader. <laughs> like he'll just be like, it's like all the old classics and stuff. And, um, but yeah, so he played, he played guitar and played piano, self-taught for both of them. And then I, so we had a piano and I would just, as like literally like a four or five year old would just go up and I would hear things and I would figure out how to play it on the piano. And my parents were like, you have like a, you have a knack for this. So then they put me in piano lessons and I did that for like five years and then just never stopped, so. I played by ear when I was younger too. There was something magical about figuring it out yourself. Yes, and the you first know? thing I did, you'll love this. The first song I ever figured out by ear that set me on this trajectory was Star Wars. Like, Very nice. Yes, like the 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 theme. The Star Were you Wars. on the piano going? Yeah, figuring it out, and that was that was the moment where I was like, "This is so cool." And my parents were like, "Wait, how did you figure?" I'm like four years old. They're like, how did you figure that out? I'm like, "This is so cool," <laughs> you know. <laughs> so that was the Star Wars that really, you know, I have to give them credit for my career. I want to talk about music for a second, but I want to backpedal a little bit. You yeah. started getting serious about your faith in what you would call your high school years. Yeah. Did you grow up in faith? Mom and dad were modeling that for you or did you find it on your own? They were great models for us. Mm. So we were, they were super intentional. Both of them have been involved in ministry things for, for a chunk of their lives. And so um, we'd pray together as a family every single night. We'd pray before meals. We would- That was um, regular to you. Yeah, it wow. was like a really normal thing. So. We grew up, I and mean, we, we would get in the car, and we would joke that my dad would give sermons every time we had, like, a car trip longer than 10 minutes. <laughs> like, we'd get in the car, and we're like, all right, what's dad going to talk about today? You know, and he would just, he loved sharing his faith, and we'd talk about it with strangers and all these different things. So I grew up in it, and I had a lot of experience in it, and I think I had a really good foundation that, that they gave us. But I think in, like, eighth grade high school, like, eighth grade beginning of high school, um, is really when, I, at least for me, and I think a lot of people, you begin to kind of ask questions, which is a really good thing. Questions are important and you need to ask them. And for me, it was kind of this place of, all right, I've been taught this my whole life. Do I really believe it? Yeah. You know? And if I do, how, how do I want to live it out? And so um, that was something that was just like a really interesting process of figuring out what that looks like and experiencing church hurt because of, of ways the church and like my, my dad had interacted with churches and stuff like that and just a lot of different things that that really kind of ended up you know as in my all-knowing freshman sophomore self I was like all right here's what I believe I believe God is real I know that's true it makes sense from an intellectual standpoint and I feel like I've seen enough in like ministry context to know that God is real but 
Um, at the same time, I think God is, the best way I could put it was he's like a watchmaker. So like a watchmaker creates a watch, sets it in motion, and then kind of just lets it run on its own. Hmm. And every once in a while, he'll come in to fix things. But for the most part, it's just it's a thing. And that's kind of what I ended up believing about God, was that he created the universe, he was real, and every once in a while throughout history, he would like come in and you know fix things up a little bit. But for the most part, he was really distant and removed. And that kind of became my relationship with God then, where I did all the right things out of obligation because I knew it was the right thing to do and I didn't want to go to hell, you know? But I, at the same time, um, didn't feel like I had a real personal close relationship with him where he was like close to me and like had impact in my life. I get that. So that was kind of that that journey, that faith walk. And, you know, because of that, when you when you don't feel like you have the attention of God, you you look for the attention of everyone else. And so that was kind of that, that phase of, I wanted to be the best in sports, and I wanted to be the best in music, and I wanted to be the best socially with school and all these different things. And, um, it, you know, it just the more you get, the more you need. It doesn't actually fill you up. And coming to this point then where I'm like, okay, I've been doing this God thing. Like either, like I'm the kind of person that really wants to be all in. And so I'm like, if God is really real and like I want to know like, I want to actually, like, live for him. But if he doesn't actually have an impact on my life, then I'm, I'm, I want to be done with this thing kind of thing. And I remember just, like, feeling prompted to go to prayer. It was, it, it, I mean, looking back, it was the Holy Spirit just drawing me in. But I just was like, I need to go pray. And I remember just sitting down in my room and just, like, opening the Bible and just trying to initiate a conversation with the Lord. And in that place, How'd I remember... That go? Well, actually, it was, like, <laughs> I remember just, like, feeling the sense of peace and the sense of joy. And it wasn't like this big, you know, epiphany moment where I'm like, oh my gosh, all my problems are fixed. But I found something in just opening my heart to the Lord in that moment that kept me coming back. Yeah. And it's like in the that start process. start something great. Exactly. It's like, it wasn't like a conversion moment, but it was a transformational moment. And it was like, it was an ongoing process of transformation where I would come to prayer and slowly my heart would be softened. And slowly I realized God is not distant, but he's personal and he's up close. Yeah. So, uh, you got a couple of big tent pole life things happening here soon. <laughs> I do. May I ask about marriage? Yes. September sixteenth. September sixteenth. I finally get married. It's been a long time coming, and I'm so excited for it. The wedding dress has been purchased and and, and picked up picked yesterday. Up. <laughs> uh, have has the tuxedo tryout already happened? The gosh, pudding? the tuxedo has been. Is it a tuxedo? You kids are different. Yeah, these I know. Days, it's actually you know? not. It's just like a nice suit. Nice, nice suit. suit. Yeah, and it has been the craziest process there's like always these curveballs that just come up i mean long story short ordered i found these suits loved them told my groomsmen to order them only three of the five ordered them in time and then they're out of stock now and you can't return them because they're like custom made for you and um i'm like okay so now we're trying to figure out because they might be back in stock at the end of july but they also might not and then i literally just got an email this morning i had ordered mine but then they're like, hey, sorry, it's out of stock before we had made it. And I'm like, how does that happen? I bought That's not good customer suit. service. I know. Yeah. So we're trying to figure out the suit thing. It's kind of a crazy, crazy ride. But at least we got the dress. So. Yeah. You're getting ready to do a triathlon, or as I like yes. to call it, Ironman light. <laughs> exactly. Ironman light. Well, there's the Ironman, there's the half Ironman, and then there's the triathlon, the Olympic triathlon. And then there's actually a sprint triathlon, which is an even shorter version. So... If Iron Man's like the best and sprints the easiest, we're like stage two of four. You're gonna do uh, with your fiance. You're gonna do swimming, running, and cycling. Mm -hmm. Any part of that more scared of than the other, or just as a whole, this is a big undertaking. You know, it kind of is the thing as a whole. So individually, I feel great about all of them. I've been a runner for a while. I haven't really done biking much, but um, I'm, biking is like pretty easy for me. And then swimming is something that I've been doing also for the last year, maybe, just pretty consistently. So I feel pretty good about the individual pieces, but it's like, I don't know what I'm gonna feel like after swimming a mile and then having to go bike 26 miles, and then after that, having to go run six more miles. You know, like, Ooh. it's just like, it's more of like the all together type process that I'm like, this is gonna be crazy. So. Yeah. Seth, how does somebody who wants to be introduced to your music mm -hmm. follow you, let's say, on social media? Yeah, so Seth Schleter. At Seth, also, it's funny because some people think I'm saying Seth, but it's Seth. Like it's Joseph like, without, without the, the Joe. Joe. Exactly. Boom. So Joseph without the Joe. I didn't like, my name is actually Joseph. 
I didn't like Joe. I didn't like Joey. I chose Seth for myself, and then now it's caught on finally. <laughs> so Seth is Seth Schleter, and then Schleter, S-C-H-L-U-E-T-E-R. Looks like Schluter, but is actually Schleter. I, my, I'm just, you know, shooting myself in the foot here. But Seth Schleter on all the socials and stuff. Okay. And your first song, as we record this, get ready to come yes. to radio. Yes. You excited? Two weeks from today is when it gets released out to the world. And I'm so pumped because I wrote it, I mean, probably like a year and a half, two years ago. So it's been like this song that I have, I knew was really special, but um, has just taken a long time to come out because in that process, then I was figuring out labels to sign with and then signing with the label and then figuring out release, all the different things that you have to do as an artist. So I am just really thrilled for it to finally be out in the world. Yeah. Can I give you some advice that you already know? Please. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Yes. Okay. It's a marathon, not a sprint. It's a triathlon marathon thing. <laughs> yeah, it's an Iron Man. It's an Iron Man. An Iron Man. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I expect big things from you, young man. Thanks. Enjoy the ride, okay? I appreciate it. Seth Schleter, and uh, getting ready for music in the Christian radio world real soon. Thank you. Hey, thanks, man. Been a pleasure.